How do you write fractions in simplest form? Sometimes this question is also stated as um, write the, your answers in the lowest terms or you might see reduce, reduce your answers. If you see anything that talks about simplest form, reducing, or lowest terms, this is what this video is about. Now, <clears throat> what it means to be in simplest form or lowest terms is that your fraction is broken down to the equivalent fraction that uses the lowest numbers possible, okay, or the smallest numbers possible. And you have to reduce those fractions in order to get them to that point. It can also mean that you would be getting rid of any improper fractions. Remember, improper fractions are when the numerator is a larger number than the denominator. In order to put that in simplest form, you would need to change it to a mixed number and then also make sure that the fraction part of that mixed number is in lowest terms. Okay, so it's kind of a lot going on. Now, let's take <coughs> a look, <coughs> excuse me, at this example here. We have 80 over 5. Now, I need to recall all of my divisibility tests and all of my knowledge about my multiplication facts and fa factors of numbers and things like that. I need to use those skills in order to do this work. If you know your multiplication facts really well, this kind of work will be so much easier for you. Okay, that's one of the reasons why it's so important for you to have those multiplication facts memorized and instantly. So when I look at the numbers 80 and 5, basically I need to figure out, you know, what kind of factors do they have in common? And I always take, I always take the smallest number first because um, that smallest number is going to have fewer factors a lot of times, not always. Um, so I'm going to look at the number 5 and I'm going to think, okay, well 5 has factors of only 1 and 5, okay? So um, we don't worry about 1 because everything's divisible by 1, um, but I would think, okay, well 5 is only divisible then by 5. Is 80 divisible by 5? If not, this fraction can't be reduced anymore. Um, it can only be changed to simplest form. But when I look at 80, I know it ends with a 0. And any number that ends with a 0 or a 5 is divisible by 5. So I know that 80 is divisible by 5. Since 5 is the largest number that both 80 and 5 can be divided by, then I'm going to divide them both by 5 in order to reduce this fraction. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. So then I got to figure out what's 80 divided by 5. Sixteen, right. I did in that in my head by using our mental strategy of breaking it apart into friendly numbers because I know that 50 and 30 make 80 and I know that 50 can be divided by 5 10 times and 30 can be divided by 5 6 times. So then I just put my 10 and my 6 together and that told me that 80 divided by 5 would be 16. So I can reduce this fraction to 16 over 1. But it's still improper. Okay, So I need to um, change that to a mixed number. And oh, 16 over 1? 16 divided by 1? That's just 16. So 80 fifths in simplest form is 16. That's what it can be reduced to. Let's take a look at the next example. Now, I'm really going to need to remember some of my divisibility tests here now. Let's again start with our smaller number. First of all, you can see this is an improper fraction because the numerator is a larger number than the denominator. You can 
one way you can start is you can actually start by changing it into a mixed number. You can do that first or you can do that last. In this problem, we did that part last. Let's do it the other way this time. It really doesn't matter. It works both ways. Um, so I have to think, oh, okay, how many times does 6 go into 53? Well, I know that 6 times 9 is 54, and that's 1, 2 less. So 6 would go into 53 8 whole times. And I know that 6 times 8 is 48, so if I take my 48 6 out of here, away from 53 6, I'm left with 5 6. Okay, now I have to still look at this fraction part, and I have to ask myself, can 5 6 be reduced? Well, 5 we know is only divisible by 5, and 6, hmm, that's not divisible by 5, because it would not end up as a whole number. So this fraction is actually as low as it can go. So 8 and 5 6 is simplest form for 53 6. Now, sometimes when you have a mixed number, the fraction part will still need to be reduced. Look at this one, 24 48 This can be reduced. First of all, right away when I see two even numbers, immediately I know this can be reduced because every even number is divisible by 2. So I know at the very least they could be divided by 2. Now, I could divide them both by 2. If I did that, I would get 12 over 24. And guess what? They can still, they're both still even. They can still be divided more. And I can keep dividing by 2 until I can't do it anymore. Or there's another way I can do it in one step. If I figure out the, the greatest factor that these two have in common, okay, it's called the greatest common factor, the greatest or largest factor that they both have in common, if I divide that by that, then I will get my simplest form on the first try. Now, I'm going to put this 8, this whole number 8 down, because I don't want to forget that. I still have that. I can't, I can't forget that 8 there. So I'm just trying to figure out, how can I reduce this? Well, I know that 24 is, has factors of 1 and 24, of course, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6, it has a lot of factors. But I want to start with the biggest one, 24. Is 48 divisible by 24? Yeah. 24 times 2 is 48. So I can divide both my numerator and my denominator by 24. And if I do that, my numerator is 1, and 48 divided by 24 would be 2. Okay, so this fraction in simplest form is 1 half, and this mixed number in simplest form is 8 and a half. I'm not going to solve this one for you, just in case you're working on these math boxes.